Hi everyone, my name is Simon and you're watching Soundwave TV, transforming your video experience. I just saw The Incredibles the other day, The Incredibles 2 actually, and I wanted to give you a few thoughts about what I thought about the movie. So I want to tell you, I like the short at the beginning. Now, with the Pixar joints, is like you have been waiting a long time for them, so I wish they would put them at the end. If people want to stay after the movie's over during the credits, let them watch the movie then. But they put it at the beginning, and it was a sweet story. It's about this, uh, this nice Chinese lady, and she's you know she's uh she's missing her son, and she makes a he has a little dumpling and a little dumpling baby following her around, and it, it reminded it reminded me of my mom, and all you did just switch out. For cornbread for dumplings and that could have easily been my mom. I thought it was a sweet story. So yeah, definitely one of the better shorts that uh, Pixar has done. Alright, getting into the movie I wish they had done more with the Underminer because that was a cliff toward the cliffhanger-ish ending from the first movie and he had maybe like a couple minutes at the beginning you know, trade a couple of punches with uh, Mr. Incredible and then you do not see or hear from him again for the rest of the movie. So if you're looking for underminer stuff, nope, sorry, not going to happen. Now, I like Elastigirl, you know, everybody's favorite thick mama in the center of things. Her action scenes, and I thought stretchy powers were going to be kind of lame and I didn't know how it work for long stretches of time uh -huh, see what I did there but uh definitely now I think that's one of the drawbacks from either incredible movie that one of the family members has a lot of screen time like Mr. Incredible I think took up a lot of the screen time in the first movie and Helen she takes up a lot of screen time and I wish they could just balance it a little bit more amongst um you know the five family members they get you get a little bit more from uh from the baby now but i think i understand you want to get uh women in the center and getting them to get into action scenes that's great the problem is you traded out one trope for another one because you know bob you know he's mr incredible but he can't handle the kids you know the wacky 80s sitcom because you know um uh, men don't have any domestic skills and he's just tripping all over himself trying to keep um violet and uh dash and jack jack straight so that was kind of a drawback for me i like the villain screen saver the screen slaver you know where everybody's got a screen on them so there's a really good way that you can sort of like hey maybe we're too dependent on technology a nice little message there but i saw iron man 3 and it's like i can see the fake out coming like a mile away But anyway, it was definitely a cool effect. I wish they had let people know ahead of time. Like, I don't have any uh, epilepsy to seizure, pro seizure problems, but that's like a huge, big um, hypnotizing fight. And I wish they had just let people know up front, hey, this is, this is what we have. Let people know in the whole lead up promotion to the movie so people can prepare themselves adequately. Now, the origin of the villain in this movie kind of makes less sense than um, in the last movie. Because, you know, uh, Syndrome was just some wannabe. He wanted to be a hero, but he just built his own powers. Even though Mr. Incredible saved his life, he spent all those years trying to kill um, Bob and, uh, and Mr. Incredible and the rest of the uh, Supers. Well, the villain origin in this one makes less sense than that. He's like, you're mad at the wrong people. You know, the villains got it out for uh for supers because, you know, they're still illegal. It's still illegal to use your superpowers. But, you know, the, the motivation was just a little off for me there. But Jack-Jack Loki is the star of the movie. He is completely unleashed. He's got all these different kind of cool powers and, you know... From demon baby to multiplying to laser vision, you know, the whole the whole gamut. So that was uh cool to see him how um he was using his abilities. Man. 
I would I would like to see a little bit maybe like a toddler Jack Jack. I kind of wish they had a time skip for the movie, but it was all right. We get a little bit more Frozone. I like the fact you get a little, you know, I'm a Sam Jackson fan, so anytime you get more Frozone on screen, you know, you don't see Honey, you don't see uh, the wife, Honey, on screen. I wish that he got 14 years. They could have at least, at least um, one scene, one scene would have killed you. You had a two-hour movie. You could have given her like 30 seconds of screen time. Now, I want to ask you, do you think we'll get a spinoff with the new Supers that they introduced? You know, Reflux, Void, Screech, um, the Electric Guy, the Crusher Dude. You know, uh, uh, Void's powers was really good. You know, create uh, distortions in uh, space and time. That was really cool. But they put, they got some screen time. So do you think we'll get a spinoff with them, you know, trying to find their own way into making the uh the supers you know legit in society again and when do you think we will get an incredibles part three do you think we'll end up waiting 14 years for another incredibles put that in the comments down below if you made it this far hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to find out about future videos until next time this is soundwave signing off